Hello, I'm Sue Simmons, anchoring for this third edition of CNO SITREP 30, the new series designed to keep you abreast of developments in today's Navy, with emphasis on the people who make up our Navy, their experiences, hobbies, and featuring their special contribution to America's seagoing service. On this program, you will find yourself in the midst of sailors who know the ropes and can pull their weight, all part of a fun-filled seamanship contest. Next, we join a Navy chief and his son on a freewheeling adventure as they team up for their first soapbox derby race. Then we jog along with Carlos Campbell, who discovers that getting back in the Navy also means getting back in shape first. For our final segment, our SITREP 30 cameras head north to picturesque Narragansett Bay, Newport, Rhode Island, where we chat with a colorful and courageous Navy man, Vice Admiral Stockdale, recipient of the Medal of Honor. Thinking about a college education? Don't forget the Veterans Educational Assistance Program. It can help you get that college degree while in service or after discharge. Navy men and women contribute between $50 and $75 a month for at least one year. The Veterans Administration will add $2 for every $1 you contribute you could wind up with a maximum of $8,100 in your education fund by the time you leave the Navy. The Veterans Educational Assistance Program replaces the old GI Bill. It covers Navy people who joined up on or after January the 1st, 1977. For more information, consult OPNAV Notice 1760 or see your career counselor. Well, let's catch up with the ships of Destroyer Squadron 28. They've just pulled into port for a very special occasion. Peter Hackis reports. Since the early days of sailing, men and ships have gathered in friendly battles for excellence in seamanship. The rivalry has become a traditional maritime event with as much fanfare as in the past. <laughs> Backed by their shipmates and filled with intense pride, our modern day sailors place their seamanship skills on the line. This year, seven ships of Destroyer Squadron 28 hold their annual seamanship contest in Mayport, Florida. Along with the bosun's pipe competition, there are whaleboat inspections, a tug of war, knot tying, a P-250 light off, a mooring line fake down race, a bolo throwing contest, and a whale boat paddle race. I'm looking forward to it. I was here last year and I had a good time down here. Everybody gets a chance to get together, you know, show off that stuff. Some of the guys have been tying uh, knots. They've been, everybody's been practicing, everybody's hyped up for it. All right, like, uh, we're defending champions off the Vogue, so we're gonna try to take it two in a row, you know. We're the best there is in the fleet. He's good, but I think I can beat him. Talk's cheap, action's what speaks. I think we got a little more brains than other ships in that squadron. Takes a lot of brains. Yeah. Uh, takes a lot of air. Teams from the USS Dias, Edson, D'Amato, Fox, Cecil, Perry, and Vogelgesang take part in the two-day seamanship bout. is just to strengthen the uh, seamanship and damage control skills within the participants, the E5 and below. We use the E5 and below because it's, uh, at the same time we're using this competition as a training evolution. It strengthens their skills and within damage control and seamanship, and at the same time it gives a competition within the squadron. This year we're adding the boat crews, which in, this, in the seamanship aspect of the landings, consist of four personnel, just three enlisted and one boat officer. To be judging smartness of landing, the inspection aspect of the crew is just to see if their uniforms are sharp 
make sure they have life jackets. Make sure they were donned on properly. Do they have, in fact, a little flashlight, which is required. The boats would be checked for equipment, make sure everything was OK. Uh, more material preservation type thing on the equipment in the boat. The coxswain will take a 15-question quiz on safety of the motor whaleboat, rules of the road. The PMS is sent. And as far as the engine compartment and everything, I would give him about a six because he has oil in the bilges and the engine needs clean. Well, overall, they look pretty good. The discrepancies we have been finding are kind of minor. It could, wouldn't take too much to correct them. The events consist of basic skills that seamen use aboard ship. For the competitors, it's a way to show off their professionalism and have fun at the same time. the most valuable player award and the winner of this this year from the USS Dias Petty Officer Bastard Toro. And finally the Big Apple. representative from the USS Dias. Yeah, let's just give it to it. money when you drive your car. Check the air filter often. A clogged air filter can result in an air-starved engine that's using too much gas. Changes in speed waste gasoline, so avoid sudden starts and stops. When you see a light turn red, let up on the accelerator and coast to a stop. Never top off your tank by filling it to the brim. This usually just overflows and wastes gas. Don't let the engine idle longer than a minute. It takes less gas to restart the car than it does to let the engine idle. Make frequent checks on the mileage you're getting in your day-to-day -day travel. Maybe it's time to trade in on a more efficient car. Plan your shopping so that you're not driving back and forth and so that you stay as close to home as possible. America's energy resources belong to everyone, so let's share them wisely. Conserve energy. Now it's soapbox derby time in Virginia Beach, Virginia, as we join a Navy father and son team. Don Richards reports. Say, remember those little racers you always wanted your father to help you build? Well, in Virginia Beach, Virginia, the annual soapbox derby event was held recently to determine regional champs. We covered the derby because individual Navy commands sponsored many of the entrants, including one, Wayne Watson the 10-year-old son of Chief Cliff Watson from Com Op Tev 4, the Navy's Operational Test and Evaluation Force, headquartered in Norfolk. Wayne was appearing in his first competition. 
Getting ready for this day was no easy task for any of the entrants. Cliff and Wayne began building their car in the Comop Tev for carpentry shop almost three months prior to race day. They spend many long hours working together on the project. The hardest difficulty is this, was the layout plans. Uh, they have plans laid out for a 10-year-old, but at times I wonder if it wasn't a <laughs> laid out for an engineer. The object, the whole object of the soapbox is to teach him how to use tools and to how to build things. So if you step through it and teach him as you go, it takes some time. I've never been involved in a soapbox either way, and I've never really done a project like this with my son before. I think that's why I decided to try it. You'd be lying if anybody says they wouldn't like to win. Everybody would like to win. What I wanted was to get together with my son and build something with him and see if I could found something that he was interested in. I have quite a large family, and it's hard to get off and spend some time individually with each of the children to find something to do with them. But I think it's working out well. I think I'm getting what I wanted out of it. Despite threatening forecasts that predicted bad weather, the afternoon of the race was clear and warm. A perfect day for the Soapbox Derby. Wayne was ready for his big day. He was entered in the junior division, which had 15 contestants, many of whom had previous derby experience. Wayne's first race was a tough one, pitting him against another Navy-sponsored entrant, the USS Harlan County. And they're off in lane three is Jones. Jones in lane three. Watson is in lane one. And they're coming over the brow of the hill. As they come over the brow of the hill, it's a tight race. Both of them getting a good start. In lane one, Watson. In lane three, Jones. Coming into off of the curve, it is. Uh, it is a straightaway. It is Watson in lane one. Jones in lane three. Watson has a slight lead over Jones in lane three. As they come into the straightaway, oh, it's a line. It's much closer for this bad boy. Lane one gets the good it was a close finish, but Wayne got the checkered flag. He had won his first race. The second race was also close, but this time, Wayne was edged out. Wayne won his third race, but the fourth was a dead heat against a driver with prior derby experience. In the rerun of the fourth race, Wayne was nosed out at the finish. Because the Derby was run under double elimination rules, Wayne's racing was over for this day. But he had done well for a first-timer. He certainly had nothing to be ashamed of with two wins and a tie in five heats. Breaker 1-9 for some local information. Go ahead, local info. You got the one C lawyer here. Appreciate the break, C lawyer. You got the French kid here. We be planning a camping trip this weekend, and we just wanted where we can get some of that camping gear. Get back in for there, French kid. You definitely need to check out that old special services. I got some of that gear you need. 10-4. Hey, 10-4, good buddy. We appreciate that info for sure. Hey there, Mr. French kid. Don't forget that old special services has all kinds of other things, too, like sport and equipment fishing gear, and they can even arrange tours and discount tickets get back. That's a big 10 for there, Sea Lawyer. You definitely filled my old radio with some good info, and we're gonna check on that old special services for sure. Hey, good buddy, if you're not too busy, maybe you'd like to jump on that camping trip with us, get back. Hey, we appreciate that offer for sure there, Bridge Kid, but our old work 20 is that special services. This weekend, they done rented us out as a golf tee, 10 for 10 for would you run 50 miles a week for something you really want? Well, here's a man who does that and more to rejoin the Naval Service. Peter Hackis reports. Carlos Campbell left the Navy in 1968 after nine years of service. They were some of the best years of my life. I joined the Navy to see the world, and I certainly wasn't disappointed. He's now an author and is self-employed. He's had appointments with the Department of Housing and Urban Development, as well as with the American Revolutionary Bicentennial Administration. He's had fellowships with the Ford Foundation and the National Endowment for the Arts. But for now, he's got his mind set on returning to the Navy and has been looking at the Naval Reserve. One of the things that's really positive about the Navy, it's 
working with people that have a positive attitude, working within the framework of what the Navy calls the can-do spirit. This is really the hallmark of the Naval Service when you're talking about people. The Navy is an elite organization. It trains people to reach their highest potential. And you have to kind of get away from it long enough to have the perspective to look back and appreciate that. It's a feeling of really being somebody. You have an opportunity to learn, to study, to grow. You have to deal with yourself. You have to deal with other people. You have to learn how to overcome certain hurdles. When the reserves told me that I had to lose weight, well, I thought they were talking about 10 or 15 pounds. But when they said 50, wow, <laughs> I didn't know what to do. So I started jogging. I worked up to where I could run 50 miles a week. And after about three months, I had dropped the 50 pounds. And I guess now probably what you call an addicted jog, I'm going to keep running forever. Reserves won't be the same as the first nine years, but it will give me a chance to be part of the Navy again. Weekend drills, a couple of weeks of active duty each year, camaraderie, putting on the blue uniform again. That all means a lot to me. have a weight problem? Well, you're not alone. Most people who are overweight not only eat too much, they eat the wrong kinds of food as well. Being overweight strains the heart, blocks the arteries, raises the blood pressure, and puts enough added stresses on the body to cause arthritis, hemorrhoids, phlebitis, diverticulosis, varicose veins, and strokes to name a few. In effect, you're eating your way into an early grave by not controlling the amount and type of food you eat. Don't push your weight around. Begin now and take the stress off your body. Eat sensibly and control the type as well as the amount of food you eat. Remember, a good diet means good health. Our final segment on this edition is an inspiring story of a former prisoner of war who led the resistance in a Vietnam prison camp for more than seven years. Ben Mast reports. You know, this may look like to you a, a receptacle in which I would uh, get a drink. Uh, it was that for seven years, but it was much more. It was my link with sanity, my link with <laughs> my community, my link with uh, the world. But although it was a, a drinking receptacle, and one the Vietnamese thought served only that purpose, when I was being moved, candles and spoons and cups were being thrown around, I was watching this like a hawk. Because without this, I was out of the society of the prison camp. Thank God they didn't know that. You can hear with your ear on the wall, it's greatly magnified if you put a cup of the right, of the right material between the wall and your ear and you can push down on it and you can hear the faintest scratch in a, in a cell block that has got... Jim Stockdale, a Navy carrier pilot, was shot down over Vietnam in September 1965. He spent the next seven years in captivity, four of those years in solitary confinement. He was tortured 15 times, emerging from the ordeal with a permanently twisted leg, but with spirit and mind, if anything, strengthened. In 1973, he was returned to the United States, and reunited with his family. Now a vice admiral and head of the Naval War College, he wears the light blue ribbon of the Medal of Honor. What he learned in the crucible of prison camp, he believes, is priceless beyond measure. You cannot really appreciate how much I strength I gathered from those cocky, wise, solid as a rock American fighting men that I was with. 
and you'll never know the real meaning of the word of uh, the word love until you uh, come across some American humor after a, a long period of isolation. Imagine my predicament on a cold November morning, and it can get cold up there in those clammy cell blocks. Been shot down for two months, hadn't even been within earshot of an American voice. I'd been sick, I was crippled, I was, by this time, for the first morning since I'd been shot down, on my feet, on crutches, pushing it down a dark passageway, uh, a coffee can, which had been my bathroom for the night before, scooting it along with my good leg, was in, uh, led into a cell which had at its far end a tiny cell with two bunks of the same sort that I'd left, a shower head that improvised, an old rusty shower head, and the guard grunted and slammed the door and bolted it, and the obvious idea was for me to dump my bucket and take a shower. And I can't imagine when I was any more depressed until I looked under that shower head and there was a kind of a hole in the concrete and there was etched in very small print, smile, you're on candid camera. When you know of the things that uh, Jim did once he was shot down in, in Vietnam, and uh, his resistance to torture, his actually uh, self-inflicted wounds on his face and, and so on to keep, to make himself unattractive enough that they would not want to make war propaganda pictures with him, for instance. Uh, things of that nature that, that uh, went well above and beyond the call of duty and were the reason why he was given the, uh, awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor. So I'm one of Jim's biggest admirers. He's, he's one of my all-time heroes in this country. Admiral Stockdale has paid his dues. He has served his country and his service well beyond the call of duty. And yet, he has chosen to remain in the Navy. There was never any question in my mind when I came out of prison that I, I wanted to devote all my energies to my service and my country. Uh, to leave at that point would have been like uh, turning in your football suit when the team was behind uh, 13 to nothing. And uh, I just felt like it was, it is my country, and uh, I want to have something to say about how it's protected. One way Admiral Stockdale has his say in the defense of his country today is through the leadership and influence he provides future senior military commanders at the Naval War College. The challenge of education is not to prepare a man for success, but to prepare him for failure. That's where the heroes and the bums really get sorted out. I'm teaching a course here, an elective course which has about 50 students in it right now, and it's based on classic philosophy and literature. I use this as a vehicle for us to discuss as military officer to military officer where we really live as military men and women. Where, what is really the bottom line, to use a coarse and modern phrase? What really measures our effectiveness in, in, under duress? And I think that uh, I'm on solid ground when I think that a part of an officer's world lies in the world of philosophy, whether he takes it as a formal subject or not, or whether he just realizes that there are plenty of smart people on this world that believe that there are absolutes. Socrates was a stone cutter, uh, was a slave, Aristotle was a Macedonian, they're all sort of on that. I couldn't move, I couldn't run, I can't run now, with a stiff leg, but I, nobody that I know was out where they could run, they were in cells, but running in place I was often done until the guards made you quit because they thought you were sending signals to the other people with your, the patter of your feet. But uh, sit-ups, and particularly push-ups, seem to be my, my uh, standby. And I, I did 400 a day for seven years. 
I could even do them in leg irons, scrabbling irons. I could flip around and maneuver with those things on. I think one of the biggest uh, positive changes in the country when I came home was to see all these people out jogging, skiing. Sport and health had really uh, swept America, and it's still on the rise. particularly important that seagoing men have a regimen, a regular exercise program, because of their shipboard duty and the, uh, the wear and tear on the nervous system after months at sea. That is the real basic truth of, of our military are that man is the thing. And it's the guy that can improvise and the man that can make it work when the, the book doesn't have a solution for it. And it's the man who, who uses his in, intuition and really says, this is, a, this is a navy of sailors, not of gadgets. And it's we who, who make those gadgets work, not the other way around.